Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lecture 22 of Computer Architecture. Today, we're going to talk about building a data path. Last time, we ended part two of uh, the course, and part in part one, we spoke about logic design. So we spoke about how we can put together different logic gates to build circuits that can do basic operations. Uh, and then in part two, we looked at uh, the language that the computer understands. So we looked at instructions, and we looked at um, how we can program a computer using instructions. Uh, and today, what we're going to start is going to start part three, which is microarchitecture, which is the layer that connects these two. So we're going to look at how we can take the building blocks that we learned how to build in part one and put them together to build a processor that can execute the instructions that we learned about in part two. Okay, so today we're going to start putting everything together and we're going to start how processors are built. Okay, and to do that, there's two parts of the processor. There's the data path. The data path is uh, the part of the processor that does all the operations, that executes the instructions. And of course, there's the memory where all the data is. Uh, and we're going to start by talking about the data path. So the part of the processor that executes all the operations. And accesses the memory and later on we'll look at how memory is structured okay let's get started with talking about a data path um so before that kind of a quick um uh introduction so we've we've seen uh before uh about cpu uh, performance factors and we saw how there are different performance factors that go into the performance of a cpu uh one of them is the number of instructions that you need to express a program uh, another one is the CPI, the cycles per instruction, the average cycles per instruction, and another one is the clock frequency. Now, the instruction count, uh, the number of instructions that you need to represent the program, that is determined by the ISA, and of course, how good the compiler is at generating code in this ISA. Okay, so the instruction count is determined by what we've covered so far, right? Designing an ISA, uh, that allows you to express programs briefly, but of course, at the same time, is easy to uh, implement efficiently. Um, but what we've covered so far is 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 impact instruction count. Uh, but what we are about to cover uh, uh, impact CPI and cycle time. So CPI and cycle time depend on how the actual hardware is implemented, and that's what we're going to look at today. And what we are going to do is we're going to look at two different MIPS implementations. Uh, we're going to start with a simple version, which we'll start talking about today. And then in a few lectures, we will look at a more optimized version that is more realistic of what you would see in, um, in computers today. And this uses a technique called pipelining, which is very important in uh, reducing CPI and also reducing uh, cycle time. Okay, so so uh, we're going to start with a simple version of the of the of a processor implementation uh, for MIPS, and then we will look at a more optimized version, and we'll see how these two different versions that implement the same ISA, right? They're two different microarchitectures for the same ISA, result in different CPIs and different cycle time. Okay. Uh, also, uh, when we are going to look at these two implementations, we're going to focus on a simple subset of the instructions we've covered so far. Uh, that the, and this subset shows most aspects. So we're going to look at um, arithmetic and logical operations like add, subtract. Uh, we'll also look at uh, immediate operations like add immediate. Uh, and then we also have a set lesson as an, as a, is also an arithmetic instruction. We're going to look at memory reference instructions. In particular, we'll cover load word and store word. And we're going to look at control instructions. In particular, we'll look at branch, unequal, and jump. Okay, we're not going to look at other instructions. Uh, uh, however, the concepts that we're going to talk about for these instructions extends, extend easily to other instructions. So to keep things simple, we will just focus on these instructions. Uh, but, but this should be enough to uh, help you understand all the different concepts. Okay? All right, so building a data path. What is a data path? Data path uh, is a set of elements uh, that process data and addresses in the CPU. So it's a bunch of logic blocks connected together in order to uh, process data and addresses because that's what computers do, right? They're either computing on data or they're doing some address calculations to load and store data. Uh, 
the, the data path has different components. The MIPS data path will have the following components. Uh, first, we're going to need a PC register, a register called the program counter, which tells us what instruction we're currently executing. And we're going to need an instruction memory to load instructions from. Okay, so these two parts of the data path are necessary for fetching instructions. We're going to need a register file, right? Excuse the typo here. So we're going to need a register file to read and write registers, because that's what instructions do. They read from registers and they write to registers. We're going to need an ALU, and the ALU we use for many different things. For example, uh, um, for arithmetic and logic operations, we're going to do the ALU to perform these operations. Uh, but also for things like load and store instructions, we're going to use the ALU to calculate the memory addresses, because if you remember, uh, memory at uh, load and store instructions, they had a base register, they had an offset, and we need to add the base register and the offset together so we can use the ALU for that. And also, we're going to need an ALU to calculate the branch target address. So remember how we said that when we do, when we target branches, uh, when we represent branches, the offset, the labels uh, that we're branched to, uh, we, we use the PC relative addressing, which says that the target address uh, is PC plus four plus offset times four. So we're gonna need an ALU to do the math uh, for uh, calculating the targets of branches. Okay, so we need a PC register and instruction memory to fetch instructions. We need a register file to read and write registers. We need an ALU to do all kinds of operations. And then finally, we're gonna need a memory, right? We're gonna, because when we load and store data, we're gonna load it and store that data from memory. Okay, so we're gonna need a data memory. So these are kind of the major components of our uh, data path, the PC and the instruction memory, the register file, the ALUs, and the data memory. Okay, so with that said, let's uh, start with building a data path. Uh, so when we execute instructions, what is the very first thing that we need to do? The slide title kind of gives it away. When I execute a program, when I want to execute an instruction, what's the first thing I need to do? Right, I need to I, I need to have the instruction. So I need to fetch the instruction. I can't execute instruction if I don't have it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to fetch the instruction. So we have a program counter. There's a register called the program counter. And this register uh, points to the uh, instruction that we currently need to execute. So this register holds a 32-bit memory address, okay? Now what happens, the first thing I need to do is I need to pass this memory address to an instruction memory. So we're going to have an instruction memory, okay? This is an instruction memory. It takes an address, right? And then it gives you a value at that address. In this case, the value is going to be an instruction. And we're going to pass the PC value as the address to this instruction memory. And the instruction memory is going to give us the instruction that we need to execute. Okay, so that's the very first thing. Uh, now I need to go off and execute this instruction, uh, but before I get into that, so once I once I get this instruction, what do I need to do with the PC? So I use this PC to get an instruction, but on the next cycle, I need to uh, I need to update this PC, right? So assuming I don't have any branches, the PC is going to be incremented by how much? How many bytes is an instruction? Right, an instruction is four bytes, and a PC is a memory address that points to the instruction. So every every uh, cycle, what I need to do is I'm going to have to increment the PC by four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this PC, and in addition to passing it to the instruction memory to read an instruction, I'm also going to pass it to an to an adder. And this adder is going to add four. And now over here, I have PC plus four. And what I'm going to do with PC plus four, so here the adder is going to increment the PC plus four so that I have the address of the next instruction. And then what am I going to do with this? I'm going to bring it back, okay, and pass it as, uh, the, uh, as the next value of the PC. So remember here, the PC is a register, okay? So what happens is it's going to hold its value throughout the entire cycle during which we're executing this instruction. And on the next cycle, what's going to happen is PC plus four, which is the value here, will become the new value of PC. Uh, and uh, that's what, how on the next cycle, I will fetch PC plus four 
uh, I will fetch my new PC will be PC plus four um, relative to the old PC, and I will fetch the next instruction that way. Okay, so I'm going to update the PC register at the end of the cycle so that we can fetch the next instruction on the next cycle. So this is the part of my data path that's related to instruction fetch. I have a PC. Uh, it has a memory address to my instruction. I use it to read an instruction from the instruction memory, and I also increment it by four every cycle so that I can move on to the next instruction. Okay, any questions so far? Everything's clear? Okay, great. So, uh, so now we know how to fetch instructions uh, from the instruction memory. The next step is to actually execute these instructions. And what we will do is we will go through the different kinds of instructions and see what we will need to add to our data path in order for us to execute each kind of instruction. And let's start with R type instructions. So the R type instructions are essentially the arithmetic instructions uh, that take two source operands and have one destination operand. So an example of an R type instruction is the add instruction. So if I add something like add T1 A0 S2, Okay, so I fetched this instruction from memory. So now this is the instruction that I have over here. What do I need to do? Uh, what What do I need to do with uh, this? What does instruction require me to do? Right. So I'm going to need to use the ALU to do the addition. But there's something I need to do even before using the ALU. What is it? Right, I need to get the registers. I need to get the registers. So what I need to do is, I, in this case over here, I need to read registers A0 and S2 from the register file. And I'm going to add them, and I'm going to put the result in T1. So the first thing I will do is I will take my instruction, and I'm going to extract from the instruction my two source operands. Right, In this case, they're going to be A0 and S2. And I'm going to pass those to a register file. So I'm going to have this register file over here. You guys remember we spoke about how to implement register files. And the register file can re yeah, and the register file we implemented, we can give it two registers and it, and it can read two registers at a time. So in this case what I will do is I will take the instruction that I read and I will extract from it uh, the two source registers, the, the the numbers for the source registers, and I will use uh, the source register numbers to read the source registers from the register file. So now what, what I've done is I've read the values of A0 and S2, and I have them here at the output of the register file. Okay, so now that I read the registers that I need to add, what's the next step? Right, exactly, I need to pass them to an, the ALU to add them. So the next step is I'm gonna take these two values, and I'm gonna have an ALU, and I'm gonna pass these two values to the ALU so that the ALU can add them. And obviously, the ALU can do a whole bunch of things. So I'm going to have this control signal over here called ALU operation. And what this control signal does is it tells the ALU to perform an addition. Okay. So now I add A0 and S2. Uh, and then at the out, A0 is going to be here. S2 is going to be here. And at the uh, output over here, I'm going to have the result. I'm going to have the result of A0 plus S2. Okay? Uh, sir. Yes. Uh, is the add uh, when we when we you know, represent it as a binary? Is this the selection uh, of the LAU, ALU? Yes. So if you remember, we encoded each operation as uh, as we had a binary encoding for each operation. Uh, the control signals we covered that in a previous lecture, and that's what's going to be the ALU operation over here. Correct. So this ALU yeah, operation thanks. has four bits. These are going to be the A invert, the B invert, and the select. Okay, so we have, so now our ALU added A0 and S2. Now, what do I want to do with the result of the addition? Right, I want to write the value, correct? I need to write the value to T1. So, where is T1? Well, T1 is in the register file, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I need to uh, pass it here to the right. I, I need to, I need to, set which register I'm going to write to, and I need to pass the data that I want to write. So where do I get the number of the register I want to write to? Well, I need to write to T1, and I get uh, I know I need to write to T1 by looking at the instruction. So I'm going to get the, reg the right register number from the instruction, and the value that I want to write is the output of the ALU. So the, the output of the ALU is A0 plus S2. 
that's the value that I want to write to T1. So I'm going to take that value and I'm going to bring it all the way back over here uh, to the right data. Okay, so I'm going to get the value from here. I bring it back and I pass it as the right data. And I also extract the, red, the right register number from the instruction so that I know which register I would like to write. And of course, uh, I need to have a control signal that specifies whether or not I'm going to I'm writing to a register in this instruction, because some instructions don't write to any registers. So if my instruction does not write to any registers, I need to make sure not to write anything. I'll just have garbage data coming in over here, so I need to make sure that I don't write anything. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, so here we, we said we write back uh, to the destination register at the end of the cycle. And again, you know, remember how we said that uh, we write, we update at the end of the cycle. So here that I could have been reading, the instruction could be reading and writing uh, to the same register. So I would hold the old value for the whole cycle and then it will update it on the next cycle. Okay, so this is the part of our data path that deals with R type instructions. So instructions that do take two operands, do some ALU operation and give us uh, a destination operand. Okay, any instructions so far? Is this clear? So someone's asking, how do we translate the op code and the function code to an ALU for bit instruction? So that's a very good observation, right? My op code is six bits, and you also have a funct field that's also six bits, but my ALU operation is four bits. So we're going to need to have some kind of controller that will get, give us the ALU operation, and we're going to look at that controller next time. Okay, not just the ALU operation, but we're going to need some kind, some way, some kind of controller uh, for also tell us whether or not we're writing. So we're going to have to look at the opcode, figure out if this instruction writes to the register file or not, in order to set this control line. So I'm going to be marking all these control lines with blue. Okay, and later on next lecture we'll look at how we're going to set the values of these control lines based on the instruction, okay? But for now, you can just assume that we are able to set the right value for these control lines uh, for each of the instructions. Any other questions? Okay, so we've seen now how to, how to support R-type instructions. Uh, the next uh, question is immediate instructions. So how do I support immediate instructions? Well, what is what does an immediate instruction look like? It looks something like this. We have add immediate, T0, S0, and 4. Okay, so in this case, rather than adding two registers and storing the result in a register, we're adding a register and a constant and storing the result in a register. So it's very similar to what the add instruction did, right? Except that for my ALU, rather than adding two register values, I'm going to add one register value over here, but the other operand has to be the uh, constant. So in this case, it's four. So what I need to do for immediate instructions is rather than pass the second register value as uh, as a second operand to the ALU, I need to pass the constant that 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 I need to add as a second value in my ALU. Okay. So where do I get this constant from? Where do I get four from? Right, so four is encoded inside of the instruction. So here, if I have an immediate instruction, then inside of these 32 bits uh, of the that are the instruction, uh, there's 16 bits that encode the offset, the the uh, the immediate value, which in this case is four. So what I need to do for immediate instructions is I need to take uh, the immediate from the instruction, and I need to bring it over here. To, as a second as a second operand to the ALU, I need to pass it as a second operand to the ALU. Okay, and this is exactly what we do over here. We get the immediate from the instruction, and we pass it over here. And now we have a multiplexer that's either going to select the second register value or the immediate uh, as the second operand to my ALU, depending on whether I am executing an R type instruction or an immediate instruction. So if Add this multiplexer will select read data two coming in from here as the second input to my ALU. And if I am doing add immediate, then the multiplexer is going to select 
uh, the immediate value coming from the instruction as the second input to my ALU. Okay, and again, we have a control line here, ALU source, which we will set uh, based on whatever the instruction is. Now, there's one catch here, and that is that this ALU takes 32-bit values, right? The ALU, ALU here takes 32-bit values. But the offset, the, 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 uh, the immediate value here is not a 32-bit value. The immediate value here is a, uh, the immediate value here is a, uh, is a 16-bit value. So what do we need to do to it? How do I convert a 16-bit value to a 32-bit value? No, I don't shift. I don't shift right, no. I do sign extension, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sign extension. So I'm gonna take the 16-bit value and I'm gonna sign extend it to become a 32-bit value. Okay, so what does sign extension mean? Well, it means that if this, if the leftmost bit was one, I'm gonna fill the remaining 16 bits with one and treat it as a negative number. And if the leftmost bit was zero, then I'm gonna fill the remaining bits with zero and treat it as a positive number, okay? Any questions? Is it clear how we support immediate instructions? Um, sir? Yes? We said that you know, before the multiplexer, you have the value in the right register, or it will be the immediate value. But in this case, when it is immediate, it will not be the value in the right register. Uh, uh, so you're saying that when it's an immediate uh, instruction, that we don't have we don't have any useful value coming in for, coming out from here, correct? Yeah, that's right, and that's why we're not going to select it. We're going to select the value coming from here. There's a value that comes by default, Yani. It's not BG mushy. It's not like in a bit on the read data two zeros or something. So so whatever we get from read data two is just going to be garbage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but but it doesn't matter what it is because we're not going to read it. We're, we're not going to select it. We're going to select over here. Yeah. Okay. So there's actually a meaningful value that comes out from here, and you'll you'll uh, you'll kind of later on you'll figure out what this value that's going to come out is. Uh, but for the purpose of today, we don't need this value, so we're just going to ignore it, and we're going to select this value down here. But you can you can predict what this value is going to be. Okay. Other questions. No, it's not going to be a previous value from a previous instruction. Um, don't worry about what it is. Later on, when we we cover more details, you'll uh, you'll figure out what what would be this value. But it doesn't matter what it is because it's not going to be used. Okay. Okay. So this covers immediate instructions. So like like I said, we're going to do sign extension over here. So that we take our 16-bit value and convert it to a 32-bit value, which is what the ALU expects. Okay, so this covers immediate instructions. Next, we're going to look at load instruction. So a load instruction looks something like this. We have load word, and then we have T0 is our base register, uh, and then we have 8 as our offset, and then with the word that we load, we're going to put inside of S0. Okay. So what do we need to do? for this load instruction? What needs to be done? So before I load, right, before I load, right, I need to get the value of T0. What do I need to do with T0? What do I need to do with T0? Right, I need to add 8 to it, right? I need to get the value of T0. I'm going to add 8 to it. And when I add 8 to it, that gives me the address I want to load from. And then, then I load the value from that address, and I put it in S0. Okay? So the first step of doing a load is 
uh, adding T0 and 8. Now, where is T0? Well, the value of T0 is right here, correct? Because T0 is the first source register. So when I, when I get this instruction, the, the T0 is going to be here. So the value of T0 is going to be here, correct? And where is 8? Well, 8 is my immediate, is going to be in my immediate field. So I'm going to have 8 coming out from here, correct? So if I just select this value over here, 8, I'm going to get T0 and 8 over here, which means I'm going to get T0 plus 8 over here if I set this value to add. All right, so I already have hardware in place to do T0 plus 8. The same hardware that I used to add a register and an immediate value, I'm going to use to add the base address register and the offset. Okay, we're going to use the same ALU to do that. Clear? Okay, great. So now that I've done that, now I have T0 plus 8 over here at the output of the ALU. So this is the address that I want to load from. What do I do with this address? Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to read a value that is stored at this address. So what I need to do is I need to take this address and I need to pass it to what? Right, I need to pass it to a data memory, not a register file, because the load load word will load from memory, doesn't load from a register file. Okay, so this address over here, this is over here, I'm going to have T0 plus 8, the address that I'm going to load from. So I'm going to take that address, and I'm going to pass it to a data. And I'm going to tell the data, memory, we're going to have a control signal here that tells the data memory that I would like to read. And when I tell the data memory that I would like to read, what it's going to do is going to take this address, and it's going to read the value at that address and give it to me over here. Okay. So I'm going to pass the load memory to load the value at that address. So now I have the value that I loaded over here. What do I need to do with the value that I loaded? Right, exactly. So I loaded the value at T0 plus 8. Now what I want to do is I want to take it and I want to write it back to S0. But but over here in my previous design, when I, I already had this value over here that was coming back and being written. Okay, but that's not right because this here is the address. It's not the value that I want to write. So this is the value that I want to write for, for add instructions and add immediate instructions. But it's not the value that I want to write for load instructions. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to, depending on the instruction, I need to select whether I want to write this value over here at the output of the ALU or the value over here at the output of the memory. If it's a load instruction, I want to write back this value. And if it's, a, if it's an add or an add immediate instruction, I want to write back this value. So you're absolutely right. I'm going to need a MUX. So I'm going to add a MUX over here. And this MUX is going to select either, if this is a load instruction, the MUX is going to select the value coming in from here. OK, and if it's an add or an add immediate instruction, then the MUX will select the value coming in from over here. OK, so here I'm going to choose whether I'm going to write back the output of the ALU or the output of the memory based on what the type of the instruction is. OK, so now that I've selected whether I, I want to write back the output of the ALU or the output of the memory, now I take this value and what do I do with the value at the output of the MUX? Right, I write it back, exactly. So I'm going to take this value over here and I'm going to bring it all the way over here and I'm going to write it back to my right, as my write data, okay? So I'm going to write back the final result. Okay, so this, uh, modif this addition to the data path uh, helps us support load instructions. So now we have a data path that can do R type instructions like add and subtract, it can do immediate instructions like add immediate, and it can do load instructions. Okay, any questions so far? Sir? Yes. 
Uh, we added a multiplexer, but we don't. Don't we have a controller that uh, controls mem read and uh, register write? Right. Yeah. So, and so mem read will tell us whether or not to read. Okay, and register write will tell us whether or not to write the register. But that doesn't so, tell us what what value to write. Okay. 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 And did that answer your question? Okay. So someone's asking uh, if we're doing an add or add immediate instruction, then the value out over here is not going to be an address. It's going to be um, just some integer. So it may not be valid to read from that address. That's absolutely right. And that is why we need this mem read over here. Okay. Because if it's an add or an add immediate instruction, we don't want to try and load from the value at the output over here because this value is not a valid memory address. Okay. So if it's an add or an add immediate instruction, we're going to set mem read to zero in order for us to make sure that we don't try to read from the value over here, from the add from the value over here. Okay? So that's a very good observation. Any other questions? All right, uh, so now we have load instructions. The next step is to support store instructions. So what does a store instruction look like? It looks like this. We have store word A08SP, for example. So what does this instruction do? Well, what we need to do is we need to add 8 to SP. We need to get do SP plus 8. And SP plus 8 gives us the address we want to store to. And then we also want to read A0 from the register file and store the value in a zero to the memory. Okay? All right, well, we already have a way to find SP plus A0, right? SP is going to be the first source register over here. So the value of SP is going to come out from over here. And then 8 is going to be this offset coming in from over from here. So we just pass that and select that as the second input to the ALU. And then the ALU will do SP plus 8 for me. Okay, so I'm going to have SP plus 8 out here. I'm going to provide SP plus 8 as the address uh, to the data memory. Okay, but, there, but we, uh, there's, there's one more thing that we need to do, which is we also need to get A0, and we need to write the, uh, provide that as the right data. So where do we get A0 from? Where do I get A0 from? Right, the register file. So A0 is going to come from the register file. Okay. Do I get it from so I'm gonna I'm gonna provide the 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 number for A0 as one of the read registers? I'm gonna get it as one of the outputs. So which one of the these is going to be A0? Is it read data one or read data two? It's not read data one, right? Why? Because read data one is gonna have uh, is gonna have SP, right? So SP is I need to add SP to eight, okay? So then SP has to be the read data one, right? Because eight is coming in as the second argument, okay? So read data one is gonna have SP, okay? And eight's gonna be coming in from here. So then where do wh what does A zero have to be? I can't read A0 as read data 1, so A0 has to be read as read data 2. Okay? So I'm going to provide SP as read to register 1. I get the value of SP over here. I add it. I'm going to get 8 from over here, and I add SP to 8 and get the address I'm going to store to. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, and, and I know this is the sense over here, so we're going to use the ALU to add the offset to the base register. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the number for A0 as read register 2, 
I'm going to read the value of A0 over here. I'm going to take this value that I that I get uh, as read data 2. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to pass it as the write data for the data memory. So as you can see over here, read data 2 comes out and it comes over here as the write data in the data memory. So we're going to pass the value of the second register as the data to be written. So remember, store word has two source registers. It does not have a destination register. Okay, and that's all we need to do for store. Uh, store word doesn't write back, so we don't need to have any 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 changes to uh, our mux over here to select what value to write back. All right, any questions? So someone's asking, isn't the address of A0 currently sent as sent to write address in the register file though? So that's a good question. So here we have, if you remember the, the format for this, and we'll look at this in more detail next time. But if you remember the format for load word and store word instructions, uh, we said that uh, SP is going to be an RS. So RS is going to be the first re source register. And this, this, this register over here is going to be an RT. So for load word, our, this value of the RT is going to be the destination register. For store word, RT is going to be a source register. Okay, what does that mean? It means that we're going to have to do a little something a little bit more intelligent over here when passing the uh, register numbers to uh, the re to the register file, and we will look at this next time. Okay, but you're absolutely right that RT is sometimes going to be passed as read register two, and sometimes RT is going to be passed as the write register. If it's a store word instruction, we're going to pass RT as read register 2. If it's a load word or an add immediate instruction, we're going to pass RT as the write register. Okay, good question. Any other questions? All right, uh, well then let's move on to the final instruction that we'll look at today, which is branch instruction. So let's say I want to do a branch. If I have branch if equal T0 S0 offset. Okay, this is my branch instruction. What do I need to do in this case? What does the branch instruction do? There's a whole bunch of things. Right, so of course I need to change the value of the PC, but I'm but that that's the last thing I'm gonna do. What's the first thing I do with a branch instruction? Right, I need to read T0 and S0 and check if they're equal. And like we said before, the way we're gonna do that is by subtracting them in the ALU. Okay, so I already have support for doing this. I provide T0 and S0 as read register one and read register two. I get the values of T0 and S0 over here as read data one and read data two. Here, I'm gonna select the register value in this case. I'm going to use the ALU to subtract T0 and S0. And if they are equal, what happens? Right, if they are equal, then my zero flag bit over here will be set to one. Okay, so I'm going to use the ALU to find if the two source operands, the two source registers are equal or not. And I'm going to do that by subtracting and checking if the result is zero. Okay, so that's the first thing that the branch from equal instruction is going to do. It's going to, it's going to subtract T0 and S0 to check if they're equal. And I already have the ALU to do that. Okay. All right, so now I subtract, I find out if they're equal or not. So what else do I need to do? I need to find the target address, correct? I need to find the target address, right. So how do I find the target address for the branch? Remember the offset is a 16-bit value, but the target address is a 32-bit value. So how do I find the 32-bit value, 32-bit target address from the 16-bit offset? What do I do?
Right, so we're going to do PC plus 4 plus offset times 4, exactly. So PC plus, four, plus offset times 4, so PC relative addressing. So if you remember from previous lecture, we said that the target address is going to be PC plus 4 plus offset times 4, okay? Well, I already have PC plus 4. Where is it? It's over here, right? PC plus 4 is over here at the output of this adder. And I also have offset. Offset is going to be this value over here, right? Because we put the, the branch instruction uses the I format, right? So the I format, the offset is going to be represented in the 16 bit, the same field that we use for the immediate, and they add in add immediate, and for the offset in load word and store word. So we're going to use this offset, and what we want to do is we want to take this offset. Multiply it by four, or as one of your colleagues said, shift split left by two, and then add it PC plus four. Okay, and that's exactly what we will do. We'll take the offset, bring it up here, shift it left by two, which is like multiplying it by four, and add it to PC plus four. And out here, we're going to have the target address. We're going to have PC plus four plus offset times four. Okay, now, now that I have the target address, what do I do with it? What do I do with the target address? I want to go to it, right? So what do I do? Right, I mean, I need to write it to PC somehow. I need to write it to PC. But am I, am I always going to write it to PC? No, I'm only going to write it to PC when I have a branch instruction and when this flag is zero. Okay? So what are, what are the values I'm going to write to PC? I'm either going to write the out, at the output of this ALU, which is PC plus 4 plus offset times 4, if I have a branch instruction and the, the result of the subtraction is 0. I don't have a branch instruction. Or if the, the branch, I do have a branch instruction, but the result of the subtraction is not 0, then I'm just going to write PC plus 4, which is this value over here. So what do I need to do? I need to select either the target address I get from here or PC plus four. So what do I do to use what do I use to do that? Right. So I'm going to have a, uh, so again this uh, ALU over here calculates the branch target address. Okay. And then I'm going to take that. I'm going to pass it to a mux. The mux is going to have two inputs. The first input is PC plus four, and the second input is the uh, is PC plus four plus offset times four. I'm going to have this PC source over here, control line to control the mux. If I have a branch and the result is zero, the result extraction is zero, I'm going to select the value coming in at the bottom. And if I don't have a branch or I do have a branch, but the result extraction is not zero, I'm going to select the value coming in at the top. OK, so at the output of the mux, I'm going to have the, 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 the value of the next PC, the value of the PC for the next instruction. What do I do with this value now? And I want to write it back to the PC. I'm going to take this value and I'm going to bring it all the way back over here and write it. Okay, so again, we said we have the mux to select uh, between to select between uh, these two values. And then we take the result of the of the of the mux as the mux, and we're going to bring it back over here, and we're going to write it. Uh, use the selected address as the next piece. Okay, so we're going to bring it back, use that as the address for the next. Piece. Okay, so now what we have is we have a data path that supports uh, R type instructions, so add and subtract. Supports immediate instructions, right? We we'll, when we get this immediate, we can do a signed extension, and we use ALU on that. It supports load and store instructions using this data memory over here, and it supports branch instructions uh, by using the ALU to compare the values and using this adder up here to calculate the branch target. Does anyone have any questions?
Okay, uh, well, if there are no questions, more about what we covered today in sections 4.1 and 4.3 of the textbook. Uh, and uh, the, uh, next time we will look at more details about this data pack. Okay, that is all for today and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.